everybody. So a lot of talk about advertising here today, but I want to talk about politics, right? We need to, we need to talk about something a little bit more charged and controversial. So um, joining me today are Catherine Peters, uh, co-founder and COO of Democracy Works, Keith Guberman, CEO of Programmatic Mechanics, and Travis Klinger, uh, VP of Strategic Partnerships for LiveRamp. So let me see, it's really bright, but let me see a quick show of hands. Who here lives in Virginia? Raise your hand if you live in Virginia. One. One, do we have one? <laughs> one person. Okay, who here lives in New Jersey? Raise your hand. Oh, we got some Jersey. Now raise your hand if you live in Jersey but didn't want to admit you live in Jersey. <laughs> Only one or two more went up. Um, okay, raise your hand again, though, if you live in New Jersey, seriously. Okay, how, now, now keep your hand up if you voted. There we go, all right. Yay! Uh, so, so that's what this is about. Um, and Catherine, why don't you get into a little bit of, of what Democracy Works is and, and the problem and how this relates to politics. Absolutely. Um, the United States has a participation problem. When we decide who should be leading us and when we decide how policy should be made, too few Americans are in the room helping be, be a voice in those decisions. Uh, of all of the Americans who could be eligible to vote, not all of us are registered. Of those of us who are registered, not enough of us are participating in presidential elections. And presidential elections are the high water mark. When we begin to talk about state and local races, you begin to see rates of 40 and 10% turnout. It's a problem. For example, in Virginia, let me slide, 71% um, of registered Virginians voted in the 2012 presidential election, which is really pretty good. The very next year, when they were choosing their governor and their state representatives, only 43% turned out. It's a 40% dropout rate even of those who were already eligible and registered to participate, let alone those who weren't on the voter rolls. New Jersey, it's a very similar story. If in 2012 there were 3.6 million taking part, 2013 we saw only 2.1 million of them come back and be involved in those races. State politics matter and having more people involved matters. And so we set out to run a get out the vote campaign targeting registered voters, every registered voter, in New Jersey and Virginia in hopes of seeing more of them feel invited in and in hopes of seeing more of them take part. So basically, you had a voter file, yeah. right? Public, public records that you can purchase or buy or access. Absolutely. So you had a voter file. Uh, and you had a bunch of email addresses of registered voters. And you needed to try and target them. Keith, how did programmatic mechanics uh, help out and, and make this happen? Yeah, so Programmatic Mechanics is an independent trading desk uh, that helps execute campaigns on the AppNexus platform. And uh, they came with the voter files. Yeah. And we have the natural problem of AppNexus has many identifiers to use, right? Cookies, uh, mobile IDs. There's browsers on mobile phones, which kind of is a cookie-based thing, bleeding the, the boundaries there. And um, we were able to help execute a campaign and try to we needed to tie all of these together, um, and that would need some type of company that had the ability to see login data or connect the actual people to these different device IDs or cookies, um, and that's where we're able to leverage LiveRamp um, to do so. Travis, how did LiveRamp get involved, and what do you, what do you really do and, and help tie these voter files to actual a way to, to access these people online and, and target them? Yeah, definitely. So LiveRamp is an identity resolution provider. So what that means is that we take offline data, so like photo files, name and address, email, phone number, and we resolve that to an individual person. So even though a person may have multiple um, name and addresses, they may have a couple different emails, maybe a couple phone numbers, we resolve it all down to a single ID. We call this the identity link. So our identity links are anonymous, persistent IDs for each person in the United States. And then we take this identity link, and as Keith was mentioning, we tie it with cookies and mobile devices. So each identity link will have different cookies and then mobile IDs tied together. So what this allows us to do is to take the voter file to match it to the right cookies and mobile devices, and then we pass these over to AppNexus. And then the campaign was run on the AppNexus platform, 
And then we received back the exposure logs of all of the people um, or all of the impressions that had the ad served. And then we took these exposure logs tied to cookies and mobiles, and we did the process just in reverse. We took it back to our persistent anonymous IDs, our identity links, and then we tied that to the voter information. So what this allows us to do is get the data both to AppNexus to run the campaign, but then also bring it back so that you can do full closed loop measurement, see who saw an ad, and then who actually voted in the election. So in a few weeks, we'll actually be able to tell, did these folks who see an ad who didn't vote a couple years ago, did they now vote this year because they saw that ad? So basically, through this process, we're able to take real, real people, real voters, process the information, target them online, and then get full feedback on who actually voted. Like, exactly. that, that's pretty amazing, all in an anonymous PII safe way, which is really, really cool. Um, so Keith, what, what were the results like from the campaign itself? Right, so we set up a control group uh, that saw placebo ads, and then we had a couple of exposed groups. Um, in the end, we served just about 4.6 million cookies uh, on computers, generally saw the ads, uh, 1.3 million device IDs, um, which translates through the identity link to just under 700,000 individuals. Um, which is the closed loop, which is uh, miraculous. And then that translated to about 664,000 664, households. Very cool. So Catherine, do you, do you think this will make a difference? Like what, I know we won't get the actual logs for a while or the actual full uh, data of who turned out since the election was just yesterday. And thank you for traveling here after being uh, working really hard all the way up through yesterday's uh, work. But what do you think we're going to see, or, or what have you heard so far about the turnout? I mean, you're right that we won't know about our targeted voters in, in any significant way for a few weeks. But turnout in Virginia was at 47% yesterday, which is almost five points higher than it was in the last gubernatorial election. So for today, at least, I say we claim that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the data come back yeah, later. Yeah, um, people, that, people based advertising um, led to that turnout. I'm sure it wasn't, you know, any sort of response to our president or anything else. I, I'm, 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 I'm sure the fact that it was a really competitive and interesting race, certainly, and, and all of the, the campaign staffers out knocking on doors, we'll just, that's all fine. But no, um, it'll, it'll take some time to suss it out, but actually turnout yesterday looked really promising. That's good. And so it will be really interesting to see how this played a role in some of those broader trends and really brought people to the polls. So after doing this, do you, do you think people-based advertising will help uh, or will be something that democracy works and organizations like it will do in the future? If, if, if through using people like programmatic mechanics and live ramp, you can measure yeah. all the way through, seems like it's very clear to get actual ROI yeah. uh, for, for this type of advertising. Our mission is to find voters and engage with them where they are and to help them meet them wherever they might be. So we use a lot of email and text messaging. And if this is really a place where we can also find people and talk to them in a, in a really personalized way, that would be spectacularly exciting. That's great. Um, as um, as uh, Teresa said when she introduced this, um, doing this kind of people-based advertising at scale has been something that um, you know, Facebook's been able to do very well with their custom audiences product. Uh, Google's able to do some of it. But the open internet and the rest of us uh, haven't been able to, to do this very well. And even this campaign, as successful as it was, was actually like kind of more manual than we'd like and didn't have quite the scale that we would really like to ideally see, um, at least for some broader campaigns. This was obviously very targeted to a couple of states. But um, for a broader you know, national type of campaign, you really want to be able to get a lot of scale, which all of the publishers out there on the open internet that aren't Facebook um, could really benefit in reaching these users uh, and being able to um, you know, monetize and get benefit uh, from, from people-based uh, marketing dollars. Um, so knowing that this problem existed, uh, back in May at our London summit, we announced uh, the Advertising ID Consortium um, in partnership with LiveRamp and Index Exchange and a number of other uh, companies who have signed on. Um, we have now made significant progress since May. And basically, what this consortium does is standardizes around a single device ID, uh, the adnxs.com cookie. Um, the companies that are participating are agreeing to standardize around a single device ID, which the, we can then tie to an open identity link that LiveRamp is providing um, to build a cross-device graph together that is as big and as large as Facebook's um, and, and be able to 
provide people-based advertising at scale. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, Travis, why don't you tell us about uh, what the next few months look like for the consortium? Yeah, so right now we've signed up 16 platforms. So 16 platforms have committed to moving to the standard cookie and joining the consortium. Over the next couple of months, we're going to finalize founding the consortium as a legal entity, setting up the service agreements, and going through all the legal paperwork. So that come Q1 of next year, we're actually able to move the technical pieces into production. So what this means is that in Q1 and Q2 of next year, you're going to start seeing the open ad ID as the standard cookie and bid request. And then you're also going to be able to see the identity link, a persistent, anonymous, people-based ID included in the bid request. So we'll be bringing people-based marketing to the open web um, across all of the partners that join the consortium over the next few months. That's great. And, and Keith, do you think that, that this consortium will help uh, make, you know, do, you, do your clients, do you think there will be more use cases for this and your clients will be interested in getting more scale for these types of campaigns? Of course. I, I mean, I think that you hit it on the head where Facebook and Google have been eating bigger and bigger budgets because there's this, I reach a certain type of person attitude and cookies and device IDs are complicated and different types of matches and the graphs and all these conversations are, as, as a lot of people touched on, the educational part of this is a big hurdle that the industry continues to get through. And um, I know that our clients, of course, would rather talk about people as opposed to cookies. It's, a, it's you know, easier to understand and more Seems effective. much more accurate. Yeah, yeah. so um, I think it's very exciting. I think it's very exciting App Nexus continues to power and to push the openness of the platform and the internet. And when we see like a real closed loop study like this, I mean, that's really, we're in new ground. And we're the ability to get the data out of the campaign, not only just get the data in, I think that we'll, we'll see better results. Okay, everybody, everybody cares about results. Um, but we'll also see you know, better conversations, more comparableness to the, the walled gardens, and um, an open internet is a better internet. So I think that we're just, you know, you guys, AppNexus does a really good job of continuing to push ahead on that, and we're going to hopefully reap benefits as we're all clients. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks.